This is the Sony FX6 and it is a great camera. However, it is not what today's video is going to be about. I am switching gears completely because today we are talking about an oldie but a goodie, the Blackmagic Pocket 4K and the Pocket 6K. Now, disclaimer, they sent these cameras over to me. Thank you, Blackmagic. Shout out to y'all for really investing in the channel, even though I'm not above, you know, 10, 20,000 subscribers. And let's get right into it. One, I really have some extremely bad news because my memory cards and all my drives and hard drives failed recently in a weather related incident. So that being said, I could just talk about the user experience and about how this camera really dealt with me or how I dealt with this camera, right? In terms of workflow, usability, creativity, and what really I got out of it as a creative. So I am a cinematographer here from upstate New York. And as you can see here, the FX6 is usually in my kit. I have, you know, a couple zoom lenses on it usually, a couple cinema lenses. Then I have the Atomos field recorder and a couple of top handles and stuff like that for audio, for XLR input. But what's really good about the Black Magic is essentially the buttons on the top. You can get right to ISO, you get right to shutter speed, you get white to white balance, right or right from pressing a button right here on the top. And then all these three buttons right here have different options that you can really interchange in the future. The screen on this Blackmagic 4K is huge. And that could be a positive and a negative when it comes to using it actually, because I feel like putting this camera on with lenses, and we'll get into lenses later, is a really big hassle. Like having this, this camera is almost twice the size actually of the a7 III, which is really what it was released as, you know, its competitor a couple years ago. It has a couple of threads built on the top even though I don't really see the usefulness of having a thread built on the top there. Has a full HDMI cord input, which is super clutch. Like the Sony a7 III does not have that. So if you're streaming, if you are able to connect this with your monitors or able to connect this with any type of recording device, killer right there. Uh, headphone input, speaker input, et cetera, et cetera. And then also it has this bottom battery plate. Now the bottom battery plate is essential if you're going to have this Black Magic camera. One, because disclaimer, the battery life sucks in these black in these Black Magic cameras. Like the battery life, especially in the winter and hot summer months, which is really contrasty seasons in which technology is not supposed to function well, this does not function well at all. Like literally awful. <laughs> I found I found it dying several times on my shoes however when i break this out it doesn't look like a traditional camera so people are like what is that thing like is that a robot or something lenses side note lenses to get on this camera so hard to come by some good glass on this camera that isn't either used or really high priced in my opinion because it's not as saturated of a market as a sony e-mount or as the canon mount you're not gonna be able to find lenses like this like I, sony is killing it with releasing this is a third party lens like the third partiness of the Sony, even what I'm recording on now, I'm recording on another third party, Tamron 17 to 50, and they're just readily available. Blackmagic doesn't really have, you know, an affinity or an affiliation or make their own lenses in general. So it's very hard for them to have a market for the lens mounts that's, you know, available to them. That being said, it is an MFT mount, which is micro four thirds, so it's even smaller than the full frame lenses that you have here. So the lenses that when you do find them, they actually will be a touch bit cheaper because the full frame lenses, I don't know what happens inside of the lenses and the gears and stuff, but they, they need more materials. They need more, you know, money to be put into the full frame lenses. I don't know why. Come, someone comment below why, but that is really my, my take on this Black Magic camera. I would buy it again in 2024 if the battery life was better, if it wasn't as heavy, like if, if it wasn't like, you know, um, a pain for my gimbal to really balance. Like it's really annoying for my gimbal to be balanced. And if lens or lenses were more readily available. Other than that, I'm really happy with the image I got out of this camera. You can't even get to see it, but hopefully in the future I get to borrow or they send some more of these out in the future so I could really test the lengths of Blackmagic in terms of their, you know, their pocket cameras like this or even their Ursa line. I really got heard good things about the Ursa line, except for their battery life. But if you like videos like this, me talking about cameras, me giving you my general experience with that, I'm actually going to be getting away from those type of videos in the future on this channel. Yes, I will be doing giveaways and stuff still, but now I'm moving towards actually telling stories with all this gear and using this to make, you know, journalistic pieces, but rather than talking about gear every day, I feel like that's like, you know, redundant and over like a thousand creators do that already on this platform. So it's your boy Kip Jackson. We all start somewhere. Peace.